What up my fellow dorks, it is the Turtle Dork back with a new movie review for you today. So this is the review that is the culmination of 22 films over the last 11 years. It is Avengers Endgame. Yes, it is finally upon us and it is here. And if you look at um, the box office numbers, it seems like everybody has seen it <laughs> in probably the first day. Um, it's incredible to see what this movie is doing and how, I don't know man, this just feels like an event, this feels like something special, feels like something different um, than anything else that we've seen before, especially what's happening um, right now. But I just want to kind of give you guys some of my initial thoughts. I've seen the movie only once, uh, going to see it again for the second time, so there are a few things um, that I, I, I'm trying to reconcile my own thoughts about the film um, as far as like some of the things that you know I had issues with, and I'm thinking that on the second viewing that I might be able to kind of um, solidify my, my thoughts about some of the choices that were made, but with that being said, there's so much in this film that I just absolutely love and I just think I think it brought the movie to um, a fitting and satisfying conclusion but some of the things that I really loved the opening scene with Hawkeye I mean seeing him lose his family and you talk about the way you open a movie and uh, it hitting you in such uh, an emotional way even though you kind of know what's going to end up happening um, um, in that moment um, it doesn't make it that less impactful when you see his family start dusting away and his reaction to it and Jeremy Renner and how he performs uh, how he performs that scene the stuff with Tony <clears throat> on the ship headed back to Earth um, just that moment that that the message that he sends to Pepper kind of catching up to where he is right now but also just him interacting with Nebula and how it just kind of humanizes her to see her interact with somebody outside of the, the Guardians universe um, and it, it's it was pretty I, I just thought that was really cool especially how we see Nebula's character utilized in this particular movie and how pivotal she is um, in the actual plot of the film as we go into the second act of the movie but then we get reunited because um, Captain Marvel comes in and she's only in the movie um, at the beginning and at the end so she just really kind of bookends the movie which is kind of cool but the reunite uh, seeing the Avengers all the original Avengers get reunited and you kind of have that that civil war moment when they are kind of uh, talking and Tony and Cap are having an argument I really thought that scene was effective too because you kind of see that the Avengers are at their lowest point and <clears throat> a lot of times when you're at the lowest point um, that's a, that's a time where you're the most vulnerable and it's easy to kind of point fingers at one another and you see that continue with Cap and Tony but um, and I like I like the references that they have back to like Age of Ultron as, as far as building the shield around uh, building a suit of armor around the world and uh, you know like uh, Tony throwing that back in Cap's face about you know if we lose we'll do that together um, all that stuff because these are still unresolved issues that we have seen from films before um, that are starting to rear their ugly heads now because of um, where they are at this particular point but then man like when you see the Avengers go and they kill Thanos that early in the film that was shocking there's a lot of things in this movie that um, it's safe to say there were a lot of surprises and some very very shocking moments things that I was not expecting and that was one thing I wasn't expecting when they go to uh, the garden planet I'll just call that uh, I'll just call that what it is and um, they go ahead and kill Thanos um, yeah I just thought that was uh, shocking because we knew that Thanos was going to still play a big part in this role and of course we see that the Thanos at the end of the movie is of course Thanos from the first Guardians of the Galaxy not the present day Thanos and the fact, the fact that they dispatched him so quickly after everything that they've gone through in uh, Infinity War is just like and I, I like what that does to Thor's character and that was one of the things that I kind of had issues with but when he chops off Thanos' head um, you know of course it's you know 
a, a bit too late, you know, too little too late. You know, the damage has already been done and how that eats away at Thor and as far as how we see him five years later because we uh, we fast forward five years later and we really just kind of pick up and this is where like the first act of the movie just really becomes more of a quieter character uh, a character based film where we really get into the heads of these characters and where they are and how um, the snap has affected them you know as far as them losing and, and, and trying to um, trying to deal, trying to handle that. So I like what we see a lot of these different characters, you know, five years later. Um, but this is the area. So this is probably the the the, the second part of the, the 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 movie, or still I guess you can call it the, the the first part before we get into like the time travel stuff. But um, yeah, just kind of getting reintroduced to the characters five years later, just to see where they are. So I mean, of course, I like where they put Cap and and and. Black Widow. <clears throat> I thought that was really kind of interesting to kind of see Black Widow as like the director um, because you know she was always working under Nick Fury so it just felt like that was like the natural role for her to take. Um, you know Cap um, I like seeing him kind of lead these group therapy sessions. I thought that was really, really cool because I think that's just an extension of who he is as a man, as a character. Um, <clears throat> and of course, like for me, I felt that was a callback to Winter Soldier for when he first met Sam, you know, when he was um, was talking to the vets and stuff like that. And just, um, you know, Sam telling him like, well, what is, what, what do you want to, what do you want to do? And Cap was just like, I don't know, you know, and like this, even though it's a very small, th small scene, um, I thought there was a lot of character building um, for Cap, just seeing him where he is and what he's doing. Um, so we know that the Avengers are in different parts of the world and in, in the universe, um, just kind of checking everything out. But, um, you know, we kind of catch up with Hawkeye and where he is um, at this time and who he has become. Um, and the loss of his family and not really knowing anything that's been happening um you can see how that has turned him into ronin uh, uh i think that's what his name is ronin but um yeah i thought i thought all that stuff was great for what they for how they handled his character um i got some notes here too yeah so some of the other characters too um so we did captain black widow um intelligent hulk you know the the fusing of banner and hulk i thought was really really interesting um i kind of felt that that was the direction that they were going to take that particular character um and i felt like it worked um you know i know a lot of people were waiting to see hulk and how hulk was going to be used but i think again with this movie really focusing on the arc of these characters that i th I, th I thought that that was the place that you would take that character, especially how we left him in the Infinity War with Banner and Hulk not really, you know, uh, seeing eye to eye, getting along. So, um, you know, they had to find a way to kind of meet in the middle. <laughs> but, um, of course, then we get Thor. And Thor, on my first viewing, but sitting with the film a little bit more, um, I actually, I actually kind of like what they did with Thor. I guess it was just maybe because of the reaction that I had with with the audience that I saw it with because they were really just, I mean, and they play it as a sight gag when you see his body and you see um, Dad by Thor. But there's a moment when they go to New Asgard and Hulk is talking to him and he mentions Thanos and Thor is sitting there and you see him with the belly and the man boobs hanging out. Um, and the camera lingers on him but in that moment as the camera is lingering on him and this is what I love about Chris Hemsworth and his performance and he has such a handle on who Thor the character is um, that's why I love his performance um, and his portrayal of the character that even when the camera lingers on his body if you look at his face you can see the the disappointment you can see the regret you can see the shame um, that he feels for almost taking on the blame and the guilt for everything that has happened because you know 
he ultimately felt like he could have stopped it. So, and, and just where his life is at that moment, um, you know, not having anything. If you if you go back and just look at his journey throughout the whole MCU and the people that he's lost, and then to get to the moment in Infinity War where he felt like he could have got retribution for all that stuff and saved the day, and he fails at it, that takes a toll on you, you know, that sets in a certain amount of depression and you see it in his performance and the portrayal of the character. But I don't know, like watching it, it just felt like they played it more for a sight gag and I just didn't know how I felt about that. So hopefully when I see it the second time, I'll have different feelings about, you know, my opinion hopefully will change um, as far as how I view um, that particular scene and his character overall. Um, but yeah, so and then Ant Man, Ant Man, I thought um, when we catch up with him five years later, the scene with his daughter, I thought was just so impactful. That one really got me kind of choked up as well, um, because it's just that idea of him seeing his daughter five years later and him feeling like he missed out on those five years, of, those pivotal years of seeing his daughter grow up. Um, like I said, I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine, like when you look at the character of Scott Lang, even from his two movies and what he had to deal with just to be able to see his daughter and how and the love that you see that he, that him and Cassie have, um, then to, to get that moment at the door where he sees his daughter as a teenager and the way again performances the way Paul Rudd plays that 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 moment <clears throat> that you can see that there's a lot of hurt in him um, a lot of, a lot of sorrowness in him for missing out on those years that he never would get back of of, of seeing his daughter grow up um so yeah that was just amazing man um you know, Tony being domesticated, now he has a daughter. Um, I thought all that stuff works for his character, his character arc, especially where we left off um, with him at the end of Infinity War. So for him to have a daughter, for him to be domesticated, uh, for him to feel like he's moved on to um, the, 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 the latter part, the second part, the next phase of his life, um, I thought was really, really interesting. But ultimately seeing what the sacrifice he's going to ultimately have to make um for not just his avengers family but for his family as well so i liked all that stuff as well when we really get into the meat the second half of the story um when we enter when we get into the quantum realm and the time travel and stuff like that i thought a lot of that stuff was interesting as well too because um when when they say like look we've been around like all of us have been um, either near or around these stones. So we we knew that they were going to go back in time and we were going to revisit some of the former, some of the previous films in the MCU. And I was like, okay, this could be kind of cool. And um, yeah, I thought I thought it was to to go back to Avengers: um, The Battle of New York, to go back to Guardians of the Galaxy One, to go back to Thor: The Dark World. Um, and where else did they go? Oh, and then you uh, have Hawkeye. So when they go back to Guardians, they you have Hawkeye and and uh, Black Widow who go to Vormir to try to get the Soul Stone. So and now the 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 the, um, the team has splintered off, um, so they they can try to retrieve these stones. So it kind of turns into like a time heist uh, type of film and I thought a lot of it um, really uh, really worked because we get a lot of great little cameos from a lot of different characters um, that we see in different settings so of course we have uh, from Winter Soldier we see Frank Grillo and, and Robert Redford and they come in at the end of the Battle of New York and how they're utilized just really really feels natural and and, and, and feels like it fits within that moment to have Rene Russo come back Rene Russo and that Natalie Portman from the Dark World uh, to come back, and Natalie Portman didn't really have much, but it was just a moment where the ether was inside of her. So Rocket and Thor go back there, so Rocket gets the ether from Natalie Portman. But in each one of these scenes where they go back in time, um, and there's two scenes in particular: Thor when he has an encounter with his mother, and Tony Stark. They have to they have to go further back into the 70s, and he has an encounter with his father Howard Stark. And you know what? I just go ahead and get into a couple of those scenes too because the thing that I really like about that is um, is the fact that it's 
having people that you've lost and it's weird me and disco talk about this before just in in life in general that you know a lot of times we don't have the opportunity to say goodbye to people that have gone away you know life doesn't work like that you know like you know when somebody dies unexpectedly you know you don't you don't get that that send off you don't get that chance to say goodbye so when tony loses his father and thor loses his mother when you have these scenes between the between them um it's 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 a great moment that especially what renee says to thor um for them to have that moment to either get a life lesson from that person that's no longer with them or to be able to say goodbye and tell them tell those people that you love them and i love i love that scene and with tony and his father um it's it was uh, it was interesting to go back to that period because howard stark's wife was pregnant with tony and the fact that tony was now a father and his father asking him for advice about fatherhood i just thought it was just so um again a great character moment for Tony for him um, and how he felt about his father for now the son to be able to advise his father about fatherhood um, it just I don't know man it, like, a lot of this stuff just kind of really hit me in such an emotional way that um, it, it's, it's just amazing that within all of this epicness all of the um, these high stakes and these big action set pieces that they're able to give you these really really important and pivotal character moments um and those were two that really really kind of stood out to me um that what else do i want to say yeah a lot of the uh let's go back to the cameos so we talked about that Haley atwell gets a, a cameo um in that flash in when they go back to 1970 and also at the end of the movie, which I'll get to as well, Michael Douglas has a little part as well, um, where we get to see young Michael Douglas in the 1970s as well. And um, yeah, I think, and Tilda Swinton, uh, we get to see her from the Battle of New York. And it's an interesting um, scene that really gives us exposition about the whole time travel aspect. Um, and as far as what she explains as far as like the different realities and the alternate realities you know it's kind of like that back to the future 2 theory you know it's just like you're not going to affect you know if you go back in the past you're not going to affect your reality but you're going to basically change and create a, a different reality um that's then going to run its course and she explains that to him and um but she ultimately does relinquish the time stone because of what banner tells her but i thought that that was interesting because that's something that is not just not just plays i don't even think that really plays a big well it does play a part as far as like the narrative in this movie but i think moving forward when you get into stuff like the disney plus movies especially when you see that from the battle of new york that loki actually escapes when he gets the tesseract again so um you know that could spin off into his own uh series on disney plus um you, you know we don't we don't know what the plan is but i find that to be really really interesting um when we get that a bit of exposition from uh the ancient one uh when she's talking to banner so those those cameos i thought even though they were really really small i thought that they were really pivotal and really important to the story and to the storytelling so it wasn't just having the cameos just for the sake of having them or just for fan service which we'll get to fan service because they do a lot of that in this movie but i think they do in such a, a positive way um, and not a, not a way that is just kind of just winking to the audience and winking to the camera um, but yeah and then of course um, Guardians of the Galaxy now the way they used Nebula I, I thought you know going going back what 2014 when we saw uh the first guardians of the galaxy and the character of nebula who was more of an antagonist a villain uh to uh the guardians and specifically um uh, gamora um by the end of that movie i didn't really think much about her but between guardians of the galaxy volume 2 infinity war and now endgame nebula has become one of my favorite characters in this universe and i love the way they've used her in these two films these two fight these 
basically this this two part uh, 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 finale to this saga because she plays such a pivotal role in the plot and the narrative of this film, um, especially going back to Guardians of the Galaxy. And Karen Gillan, I thought, was just phenomenal with her portrayal of that character. Um, and of course, the dual roles of her having to play the evil version of Nebula um, from Guardians and then also playing uh, the Nebula that's that's kind of been redeemed um, in the present day. So I thought her, I thought she was really, really good in this. Um, and then of course how Thanos from Guardians learns, um, uses Nebula to learn about what the Avengers are doing with this heist. I thought all that stuff was really, really clever and really well done. And it doesn't get, because it's easy for a lot of this stuff to get really confusing, really convoluted, but they do a really good job of simplifying a lot of like, you know, the science and the time travel stuff um, to really just kind of let us buy into it and just kind of go with it um, to not really kind of think, you know, too much about it. Like, oh, well, you know, if this is like this, then this would happen. Like, no, it just, it allows you to just really get invested into the story. And that's really what I like. Let's get to Vormir. Um, the, the, the scene between Hawkeye and Black Widow when they have to make that sacrifice to get the Soul Stone. Now, this is another scene that I was kind of like, I didn't know how I felt about it because I really wanted to get invested into that moment, but it felt like just the pacing of that particular scene. Um, just it felt like it just kept stopping and starting because when you see Hawkeye and Black Widow going back and forth to see who's going to make that sacrifice to get the Soul Stone, um, it just it 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 didn't. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't have that emotional impact that I thought that I was going to get or that I thought I was looking for. But again, the more and more I think about it and you think about these characters and their personal journeys throughout not just this movie, but through the whole MCU, um, it kind of makes sense. First of all, the relationship between the two of them. Um, they reference Budapest again and, um, and they, they love each other. I mean, they truly are uh, the definitions of um, best friends, true friends, um, friends that will sacrifice themselves for one another. And you would think that Hawkeye, with who he became at uh, at the at this moment and losing his family, that it felt right for him to be the one to sacrifice himself. But then again, because of Black Widow, and if you think back to her journey going even all the way back to the Avengers, feeling like that, you know, this was something that she needed to do to, I don't know, kind of um, clean her ledger, so to speak, you know, because she kind of mentions like there's a lot of red on her ledger. Um, there's a lot of things that she's done. Um, and this is something that she maybe she felt like um, she could redeem herself for um, having doing this self-sacrifice. So I, I don't know. I and the fact that this Black Widow who does it and ultimately dies, um, that was shocking to me. That was something I just I wasn't ex expecting. And um, but the more and more I think about it, um, and again it goes to performance. Jeremy Renner and Scarlett Johansson, there are some amazing performances in this movie, and they were just great. Um, they were just absolutely great. So even though I think the pacing of that film with the with the running, the stopping, the, yeah, and all that it just kind of halted me from getting fully invested, I think ultimately how that scene ends was shocking and um, it, it was it was really really gripping. And again, I want to see it again to really kind of solidify my thoughts and my feelings about that particular scene and the other stuff that I really kind of had issues with. So. Yeah, I guess um, let's get into uh, let's get into the third act of this movie. I don't even know what to say. Amazing, absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, Thanos comes into uh, Thanos comes into the future, <laughs> and um, you know they uh, they make a new gauntlet from the Iron Man armor. And I guess the only person that could really kind of take on this, take on the, the the power of all six rings is is Hulk. So you know, Hulk puts it on, he snaps his fingers, and then Thanos attacks, and then we're and we're in it. We we're into this third act, and this third act is amazing. Um, let's just get to the meat of this. Um, 
it really just starts with what I call the holy trinity of the MCU. You know, of course, with DC, you have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. From the MCU is Thor, Cap, and Iron Man. And to that fight that they have with Thanos is just amazing. I mean, people talk about comic books come to life. Um, the stuff that they're doing is just, it's just mind-boggling it's just incredible i mean to see thor take thunder and and funnel that through iron man and for him to shoot that out like it fucking crazy man to see thor take mjolnir and stormbreaker and the way he's wielding those and fighting thanos oh my god man but i want to get i want to get even though in all of this epicness that we see in the, 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 the final act of the movie, um, there are some really, really great um, moments that really, that really touch you and really move me um, and really just kind of rock me to my core. I'm getting kind of emotional even thinking about this because it was just, it was, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. But when, uh, when Thanos is fighting Thor, and he's about to kill Thor with Stormbreaker. He's about to shove Thornbre uh, Stormbreaker into his chest. And we see Mjolnir, and, and Mjolnir starts to move. And it, um, you, you think you're thinking that Thor is calling for Mjolnir, for Mjolnir. and it Mjolnir comes and it goes past them, and Cap. <laughs> that that is that that is that crowd pleasing moment that we saw from the first Avengers when he says I'm always angry or when Vision picks up Mjolnir in Age of Ultron um, or when Thor lands in Wakanda in Infinity War like I, I didn't know I, I didn't see that coming to be honest with you and when it went to Cap and he's got the shield and he <laughs> did a lost it absolutely lost it it was amazing but um and then this great fight between Cap and Thanos, and the way the way Cap is fighting Thanos with the shield and Mjolnir, bruh, bruh. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> Cap gets his shield uh, uh, broken in half, um, and then Thanos calls on his army, brings out his army, and it's just Cap by himself. And I love that shot, that 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 wide landscape shot when you see Thanos' army and Cap by himself. And the person that Cap is, you know he's going to go into that fight. Regardless if he, knowing he's going to lose, because that's one man versus thousands. Um, damn, I, I can't wait to see this movie again. When he hears Sam on the comms, <laughs> and he says, Cap, he's like, hey, Cap, on your left, like, that shit got me, man. Like, that shit, that shit, I don't know why, like, I lost it, man, because it just, it's almost like how, what that represents. It's not just a callback to Winter Soldier, but it's a callback to, um, not not a callback, but it's like when you hear Sam, first you know that they're back. But then it's like it's basically him saying, Look, we got your back and we're here for you. And um that shit got me, man. That shit fucking got me. I love that moment. That shit just it lost it, man. <laughs> lost it. And um then you see the portal open up and Everybody that we lost comes back. Every character from the MCU comes into this fight. And it turns into a Lord of the Rings type battle, man. Amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And we get that moment, man. It was funny. I was in the theater and I was like, he's going to say it. He's going to say it. And of course, like he Cap says it. He's like, Avengers Assemble man like <laughs> I mean like I said I, I've said this before this movie gave me things that I wanted and gave me things that I didn't even know I wanted and needed and to see I mean to see giant man punch a leviathan to see 
um, Valkyrie take down one. Um, it, I, I, it was just amazing, man, to see all these different characters come together and the payoff, even between certain characters. Um, and even even with that, when you see um, Shuri, uh, T'Challa, and Okoye come through um, right before the battle starts, and then T'Challa gives um, Cap that nod, man, bro, like, dude, the payoffs in this movie was just amazing, dog. Just absolutely amazing. Um, and even little stuff, like one thing that I, I like too was when T'Challa and um, refers to to Hawkeye as Clint because to me that goes back to the airport scene from uh, from Civil War when Clint uh, says he was like look I don't think we've met before my name is Clint Barnes and Black Panther was like I don't care and that became like a meme and a gif and for them to refer back to that and for T'Challa to refer to him as Clint just even that moment I thought was just amazing um, yeah just a great battle with every character i mean that just i mean that that scratches every itch that satisfy every need it was just absolutely amazing that that final that final battle and uh, to see captain marvel come back in and granted i'm not the biggest fan of captain marvel her her movie um but i like her a lot better in this movie than i actually did in her own movie but when she comes in she comes in like a beast and her little fight with thanos um she definitely best uh bested him which we knew would happen um but then we get that moment between iron man and and, and um and thanos and when thanos says that line where he's like i am inevitability and i believe that's what he says i'm just paraphrasing and Tony, you see him with the stones, and he says, and this is his final line before he dies, I am Iron Man. And I guess on paper, sometimes you may you may think that wouldn't work, but with this movie and Robert Downey Jr. and that character, when he says that and he snaps his fingers, dude, and the sacrifice that he has to make um, the sacrifice in his life to save his family um, in every aspect of the word family um, just amazing just absolutely amazing and I love how they do the inverse of the the ending with Spider-Man um, uh, when he's like I, I don't feel so good when Tony dies and every time Peter says Mr. Stark Mr. Stark I think oh my god that shit gets me just amazing stuff and then the final um, the final moment that Pepper has with Tony uh, <laughs> which is like you know we'll be okay um, you can rest now good stuff it's crazy man I mean it's just crazy what this like if you've been invested in this movie in this franchise in this universe um it, it hits you man it, it, it impacts you um, because it's just storytelling that we've that we've never seen before and uh it's just it's a beautiful ending to this movie man and then we kind of get like uh the lord of the rings return of the king ending where we get, you know, we get the wrap up, and this I was looking forward to because I wanted to see this um, moment that we got, you know, you know, Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch share a moment, you know, because of the two people that they lost, um, but with Black Widow and Vision, and Vision was the only character that I don't think was in the movie at all. Um, at least I didn't see him in there. But you know the, the the eulogy that they give for Tony Stark and seeing all the characters, how the camera pans through all the characters, um, and then to see Nick Fury because you know you look at this universe like Tony Stark and Iron Man have been uh, Tony Stark and Steve Rogers have been the pillar of this universe. But if there was another person that you could say was there in the beginning, it was Nick Fury, and just to have that one moment to see him on the porch, I think that's really all you needed. Um, was really really good and. The other thing that just made me lose it outside of um, uh, uh, Sam saying on your left was um, happy Ugh, you motherfuckers. happy sitting with Tony's daughter and her saying that she wanted cheeseburgers I was like 
how the hell does a little girl saying cheeseburgers fucking destroy me on the inside? <laughs> but it did. It absolutely did. Um, and then, uh, you know, then we get the, the resolution to Cap's character where he goes back into the past and, um, and, the, and the moment between a 90 year old Cap and him passing the baton, passing the shield um, to Sam. Um, absolutely great moment between the two of them. Um, I think I probably wanted to have a more deeper moment between him and Bucky. Um, but I mean, I, I was okay with all that. And then, you know, going back to the past and it's something that I always thought that we would, that the movie would end on um, would be um, Steve and, and Peggy um, having that dance. And to end the movie on that, I thought, perfect. I mean, to have, I mean, you have a lot of singular films that have a hard time bringing something to a close, ending a movie, sticking the landing. For this movie, over the last 11 years, 22 films, regardless how people may feel about these movies, the fact that this movie was able to stick the landing, I, I'm, I'm in awe. Now, I, I mean, I'm not surprised because Marvel has shown that they are great at building a universe and telling these stories and interconnecting and weaving in um, all of these different storylines and all of these different characters. Um, so I'm not surprised, but I'm just in awe. I'm just in awe of all of this. And it was just absolutely phenomenal um, the way that this movie just satisfies everything. It is such a satisfying conclusion. I don't think I could have thought of any other way that this saga could end and for me to look forward to what the MCU is going to bring us in the future. Of course, with the acquisition of Fox and now what they're going to do with Fantastic Four and X-Men and the type of arcs that they can do with uh, the characters that they've already established and new characters that we haven't seen yet. Man, it's just it's incredibly exciting. Um, yeah, we may not see some of the characters that we've seen um, in the past come back, but um, it it just it just gave us a satisfying conclusion, man. And um, I like that this feels finite. I really like that <clears throat> these characters' stories, their arcs, whether they live or die, it feels finite. And um, it, it takes balls to do something like that because a lot of times we're gonna be like, oh, they died but they might come back and do and we don't know they may do that but as far as right now and with this movie everything feels finite and i think it's just absolutely amazing but um <clears throat> yeah those are just hopefully this wasn't too long and those are things, some of the things i wanted to talk about um in this actual review so um, yeah let me know what you thought of uh avengers endgame in the comments below remember to uh rate like subscribe and share and go ahead and check out my other dorks at mouth dork at the disco dork at wb dash and at sidewalk siren and as for me i am the turtle dork and with that your boy is out